What's up? Welcome back. Today we're talking about how Rockstar was not ready for Red Dead Online and how that means that Red Dead Online just won't make it. It may be a great niche game in the future, but it's not going to hit that mainstream core audience that GTA was able to hit. I'm Bandit Barney bringing you everything you need to know about Red Dead 2 and Red Dead Online. And what kind of sparked this uh, idea and thought is actually news that Geronimo Barrera, that, that's, that's the coolest name I've ever heard, but he was the VP of development at Rockstar Games for two decades. And he left in December right after they released Red Dead 2, which was a major success as far as sales went we know how red dead online is turning out while leaving his point of leaving was uh that if he stayed at rockstar games it would have been more grand theft auto and red dead redemption style instead of other stuff going on out there now so he wants a new challenge he wants he wants to overcome new obstacles it totally makes sense after you're at a job for five years let alone 20 you start to look for new obstacles and challenges to meet and do because things just start to dole out and you know what's gonna happen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. So 20 years is a long time, but the VP of development leaving right after they have one of their most successful releases of all time is very, very interesting. And his point of leaving that there's not enough challenge and that essentially Rockstar is going in the same direction they've been going, which is why Red Dead Online isn't gonna make it and we're gonna dive into it throughout this video. With Barrera's point of there not being enough challenges or, you know, wanting challenges, so Vice, in a way, saying that there's not enough challenges, it points to Rockstar just not looking at the changing landscape of gaming and wanting to adapt to it, right? They've kind of bulldozed their way into being one of the greatest developers with GTA Online and GTA 5 being so successful. And that bulldoze mentality, it seems like what they're going to keep doing. Stick to what we've done that works so well and keep doing that. But it's just not going to work in today's landscape. It's not nearly, it's not going to be nearly as effective. One example we have for that is all the bugs that Red Dead Online has. In today's landscape of gaming, successful games answer those bugs. They have a fix for those bugs almost like week to week basis. If there's a significant bug, you can look at a developer of a, of a very popular game nowadays to address that bug very, very quickly. Rockstars had the horse glitch and bug, also the butcher bug, which these are two like significant bugs in their game. They've had it for months now, months. And when they announce an update, they then tag on to say that update will come later. And then finally, three weeks after they initially announced the update, they tell us, oh, here, here's the date that's gonna come out, which I'm glad that they've done. I'm glad that they've done a step in the right direction, but it's nowhere near what other developers, the steps they're making to meet consumer needs, to meet player needs. And this is one area where Rockstar is very, very behind and lackluster in. Something as simple as announcing a double XP weekend and then giving players double XP, or it wasn't a weekend, but when the, in, the, in yesterday's update, they announced double XP for posses. Well, the, the double XP for posses doesn't work. And for them to be so slow to communicate, and then when they do communicate what's actively happening in the game, for those things to not work, it's just like, it's, it's the, really the, the wrong direction. It's the wrong direction. And this may have worked five years ago when gaming was completely different. The market was not nearly as competitive. Five years ago, every game cost 60 bucks when it was released, every single game. And nowadays you have games on Steam that release for like seven bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. A lot of games release for free. And then they have stores that are introduced that then players can play and pay to use different cosmetic items or whatever, however those stores are set up. But the initial barrier for entry is free. Rockstar is still stuck at that $60 bar barrier for entry. And then when that barrier for entry comes to Red Dead Online because you can't play it without buying Red Dead 2 and the product's poor, it gives a really bad taste in the consumer's mouth. On top of this, they're one platform that could really, really grab a lot of new people, right? Which is online. The online version where you're interacting with other players, that's where players are gonna be entertained and create entertainment out of. That one area 
is not nearly sufficient to do so. In today's gaming space, it's gr what's growing and growing and growing are like YouTube videos around games and gamers streaming games on Twitch or YouTube, whatever platform they use, but this is a growing and growing market. And for developers, it is essentially free advertisement. Make a game that's good enough and entertaining enough, and then you will get millions and millions and millions of dollars of free advertisement by very popular entertainers using your game as their form of entertainment for their audiences. This is something that Rockstar wasn't able to accomplish with Red Dead 2. When the story first came out, it was streamed for maybe like three or four days and it was popular and then it dropped off. And that's not because the game was bad, that's because story games don't make great streaming games most of the time. Not to say that there aren't great streamers or entertainers that create content around story mode games, and particularly it's much easier to make YouTube content around story mode games, but when it comes to entertaining the masses, what is much more popular is player to player interaction games and those are what streamers and youtubers focus on that's why fortnite is so big on twitch and youtube as well as you know the new game apex legends and it's it's a different style of game than than rockstar's red dead 2 is so it makes sense that it wouldn't be as good of a streaming game but when we look back at gta 5 online that game was phenomenal for YouTube content, and it got tons and tons of free advertisement through YouTubers making funny videos and entertaining videos out of it. That's something that Rockstar has not accomplished with Red Dead Online. There's not a lot of funny, entertaining content around it because the game itself doesn't have that avenue built in. Creators have to go really around the edges and outside the box to figure out ways of making very entertaining content. A lot of the content is informational and not entertainment. And this can be a good thing. It Not to say that informational content isn't good, but informational content assesses a much more niche crowd than entertainment content. Entertainment content can reach far, far, far wider. That's why good commercials are generally entertaining and not more informational. When you watch a, uh, a commercial for let's say Doritos, right? And it's really, really funny. It captures your attention. It's much more interesting to you than a commercial for like Zuratech or one of those medicine commercials where they go and yada, 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 bad things, death and other things, you know? And, and it's much more informational and not nearly as entertaining. Entertaining things capture a much wider audience than informational things. And this is a large gap in who they can advertise to. It's an obstacle that Rockstar needs to find a way around if they want to become that big mainstream source uh, game that GTA was. We look back five years with GTA and it come and it looks like Rockstar is following the same footsteps formula that they did for GTA Online, right? Online releases, it's not a very, it's not in a super good state. But about like six months, a year later, it becomes very, very popular with really cool updates and fun things to do as soon as that social club dropped for gta online where players could create their own maps amazing game modes started coming out and youtube content started flourishing a lot more people started playing the game because one they wanted to try out these cool maps that other players were playing and two they're seeing other people have so much fun with it it's interesting how much fun could i have when i play that rockstar's following the same formula but the problem is is that we're five years later like weird Gaming is growing at an extremely, extremely fast pace. You have to constantly be adapting in order to flourish in the gaming space. When we look at it, like the, the space is so competitive now that if you lose your audience for even just a week, it could kill your game. It could, it, it could destroy it. One example, Sea of Thieves recently. Now, I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with other games in the arena, but Sea of Thieves started blowing up, right? And it's not necessarily a straight competitor to Rockstar, but this is gonna be an example of how you can just lose everything in a week. They, 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 it, it blew up. A streamer that goes by Summit1G on Twitch started streaming it. A lot of people started playing it, including myself. And then Sea of Thieves came out and announced that they were gonna create a patch where they would no longer force everyone into crossplay and instead Xbox players would be able to choose if they didn't want to play with PC players. This was not received well by their main source of advertisement, Summit, 
and they got a bunch of bad publicity immediately and two three days later no one's playing the game no one's playing the game then a new game drops apex legends all of a sudden sea of thieves is old news you're not going to see many people streaming it except for the niche community that's still interested in it and that free publicity that they had is lost just like that the game space is so competitive now see if these lost everything it's going to be so hard to get it back someone else has got gamers attentions now it's going to be extremely hard to get it back because you have to work hard when you're at the top but once you lose that top spot to someone else you then have to work even harder to gain it back so rockstar following this slow method of patching and updating that's just far behind the time in the gaming space it's not adequate enough to keep a mainstream audience you can always keep a niche audience in the game i almost want to say emotionally but the game detail and environment is so phenomenal that it's always going to have a place for dedicated players it always will because in that realm it's almost unmatched but once they lose their audience and i i, I mean i don't know the numbers but i can't imagine at this point that Red Dead Online has been able to capture an audience and keep it for very long. I imagine that a lot of players who got the game on Christmas and started playing are now not touching Red Dead Online at all. I I would bet on that being the majority of people because there's just not anything to keep you interested there. And now that people, players aren't interested, it's going to take something phenomenal to regain and recapture players' interest. On top of this, and I think this is the big kill shot for uh, Rockstar, and, 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 and I mean kill shot not in that it's going to destroy them, but it's the thing that they've already checkmarked the box and there's no way of going back, which is their game is $60. The barrier for entry on their game is high, significantly high for today's space. In two or three years, I wouldn't be surprised if most big games that drop are free because developers are finding extreme success by making their barrier for entry absolutely nothing and then everyone that sees it can try it everyone that sees it can try it and all of a sudden you end up making way more money than you had initially thought you would make if you were going to sell the game because tons more people are playing and out of those tons more people that are playing, you have a significant portion that are willing to spend money on that game store, whatever that may be, cosmetics or whatever that may be. Rockstar's berry for entry is $60. Red Dead Online is going to be $60, bucks, and it probably will be for the rest of its life. GTA Online has, GTA 5 has been $60 bucks for I don't know how long. It, 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 it was $60 bucks for like four years after it was released. You can't play Red Dead Online without buying Red Dead 2, but you can play Fortnite for free. You can play Apex Legends for free. These are battle royales, mind you, yes. But we're going to start seeing more and more common that these type of free-to-play games are going to move into other genres. And as they move into other genres, one of the points that Take-Two made on their shareholder call was that they don't mind seeing the gaming landscape move into this free-to-play market because they believe in the value they deliver. But the issue here is that a player doesn't recognize the value you deliver until they pay or unless they can see that value in entertainers on YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, or whatever. So if they have no way of seeing that value before they purchase, then why would they purchase? That barrier for entry, $60, is pretty high when you compare it to other games that bring a lot of value so right now a lot of that value is being brought forward in the free-to-play market in the battle royale area it's gonna players in the rpg mmorpg those areas will eventually follow suit when they figure out a good way of doing it right now battle royale is pretty much set you create a free-to-play game and then you add tons of cosmetics so that people want to buy that and mix up their things and set themselves apart. People haven't necessarily completely figured out how to do that with the RPG market, but as that becomes more fleshed out, we're going to see that other games are going to be able to bring value and players are going to be able to see that value because the barrier for entry is going to be free.
So this theory that we create so much value of our game, it's not wrong. Rockstar creates tons of value in their game. GTA 5 was good. Red Dead 2, the story, amazing. Online, not so good. But that value that you can give is easier received when it's free. All in all, gaming is a free market economy, essentially. The company that can best meet their consumer needs is going to be the most successful. And right now, Rockstar is really bad at meeting its consumer needs. With Red Dead Online, this has become blatantly apparent. Patches aren't coming in for bugs that have been in the game since the game was released. Updates and communication is very seldom and far between. And the faith that the community has in the game is dipping every single day. You have other companies that are doing a much, much better job. For this reason, it looks like Rockstar isn't moving in the right direction. And I think the VP of development with the coolest name I've ever read, Geronimo Barrera, thinks the same. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you and your support. If you haven't subbed already, please do. And until the next time, we'll catch you later.